Okay, hi everybody. I am interviewing the one and only Bam from the Come Up Miami. <laughs> hi, hi Bam, how you doing? Good in yourself. I'm good. Um, I um, thank you for doing this interview with me. I'm so excited for the new season. I just have a couple of questions for you, and we're gonna get, keep it light and fun. Okay. With, with a little mess thrown in. Okay. With a little bit. <laughs> with a little bit, little sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. First question: okay. How did you get picked to be on the come up, um, Miami? Well, I got picked to be on the come up Miami because I saw that there were um, Quran had put up saying like a casting call looking for people, you know, that with their very diverse backgrounds, you know, people who have come ups who have um, are currently doing stuff or and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, this sounds like a good idea. I had a little bit of a free time, you know. I I always um, I'm a dancer, so I do my own schedule and stuff. So. I was definitely just open to it, you know, as it was a project that I felt would be a very good platform for me to go out there and just showcase exactly who Bam Bam is. And this was just a great opportunity. So that's just how I got casted. Okay. Uh, what was the interview process like? Well, the interview process, like, is they ask you a bunch of questions and stuff, and then you send in a summary about who you are as a person. You tell them about yourself. Um, they also ask you for a casting tape and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it takes several months because obviously he reviews it. There's hundreds of people who audition for the come up. You know, the come up is a very well-known internet sensation, um, you know, and it has a lot of a really big following, especially on YouTube. So, you know, it's it was a big process, but within like a few months, they hit me up and they were like, listen, um, this is Karan. I like your bio. I want to get to know more about you. I will be here in Miami. And then we just continued on from there. Okay, good, good, good. Now we saw the um the official trailer. Yes. What was your what was your reaction um seeing the trailer for the first time? The official trailer for the first time. I was really shocked, to be honest, because it was just so juicy and it was so good and it gave out a lot of tea, but at the same time, it held back a lot too. So that way it kept people on the edge of their seat and just wanting to just see what, what else is going to happen. So I loved it. I felt like it was, it was just very iconic. It was really good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, now we're going to go in depth. We're going to go in depth. Um, we want our... Uh, my next question is, um, who is Elvis, a.k.a. Bam Bam? Okay, Elvis is somebody who I was when I was pop from the age 5 to 14. I feel like Elvis is someone who died a long time ago. Elvis is someone who's been through a lot of life-changing experiences, you know, um, dramatic events that really changed me as a, as a young boy, you know, growing up and you know, that's kind of who Elvis is. Bam Bam is kind of more the person who overcame Elvis and overcame those obstacles and overcame those problems and those life-changing experiences. And Bam Bam is kind of more the person who is just more pulled up now, is the more successful, the money person, the person who who buys himself whatever he wants, has his own house, has his own cars, has his own stuff. That's kind of who Bam Bam is. Okay, okay, good, good. Where did that name Bam Bam originate from? Bam Bam actually originated from the strip club. When I first started stripping, I started actually stripping illegally at the age of 17. So when I first started stripping here in Miami illegally, um, I didn't have a stripper name. So they decided to just send me on stage and they were going to come up with a, a name for me. And at that first night that I got hired, I actually fought with a client and I punched them two times and he got knocked out. So they were like, oh shit, bam, bam. So they just gave me bam, bam. And it just stuck with me ever since. Okay, good, good. All right. Um, in your words, what sets um, Miami, the Miami season, um, apart from the Atlanta season and the New York season? Well, this is not throwing any shade or anything like that to none of the other seasons at all because, you know, I respect everybody. I don't, you know, I'm not throwing no shade or anything, but I feel like Miami is very iconic in every way because there's a lot of um, come ups. There's a lot of people doing businesses. You know, there's a lot of more 
um, looking into the inside lives of people than just the drama and just fighting, you know? So, of course, there's drama. Of course, there's fights, just like every other season. But this season, you're actually going to get more entwined in people's lives than actually what they got going on. Okay, okay, so, okay, cool, cool. But, like, really separates it from every other project that Quran has done. Okay, cool, cool. I, I think so, too. And aesthetically, it's going to be it's going to be much more beautiful than yeah. some of, um, you know, those other seasons. It's going to be um, bad. Definitely, gonna, you guys are going to see, this is kind of like where the comma gets revamped. So this is going to be the first season where you guys kind of get to see the difference of how different everything's going to be, the graphics and design. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome to watch. Okay, okay. Now, um, we all watched the um, the official trailer, and mm -hmm. on that, um, what stuck out to me was um, about how your father um, basically um, disowned disowned you. Um, no, you know he don't like the fact that you're um, who you are, your sexuality. Right. Um, can you speak about that and how you felt um, having you know a parent? you know, a father, say that to um, do that to their child and what advice you have for a young child who is probably looking at um, the come of Miami who is going through that, what encouraging words or what you have to say to that young child? Okay, well, first I'm going to talk about um, my experience with my father and then I'm going to talk about the advice that I would give. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, the, um, my father was always, I was always my father's favorite. I have two sisters and there's three siblings, including myself, um, and I was the only boy. So from very young, my dad had a very good attachment with me. He loved me. He would do everything for me. I was everyone's favorite. But as soon as people started seeing that I was developing, you know, signs of gay, I was acting gay, I was playing with dolls, you know, at a very young age. I used to love pink a lot. Um, you know, I used to love uh, putting on mascara or whatever. So those little things they started seeing and my dad did not like that. So once my mom left me when I was uh, 15 years old and she got deported because of a lot of stuff that she did um, and a lot of crimes that she committed that um, it's unspeakable of and I really don't like to talk about. But you know, she had no other option, so they took her away. But my dad decided to leave and abandon me because he started seeing that it was shameful to have a kid who was gay in the family. So he was ashamed to even say that I was his son. And, um, you know, one day he, we, he would always start beating me up. He just started beating me up, started getting very physical with me out of nowhere. And I was just very stunned because this to me was very new. I've never really, you know, experienced that with my dad. I've never seen my dad get like that drinking a lot and the last few that I saw him he would just like beat me up very bad my grandma would have to get in the way throw me against the wall and just for me being who I was so I didn't give a fuck I still kept being the bad bitch that I was I still kept embracing you know my inner gay and I kept being who I was and blossoming as much as I had to blossom and he left and he did his own life and created his own family and it's been about 10 years that I haven't spoken to him um and uh you know that's kind of something that it changed me as a person but at the same time i'm very thankful because i wouldn't be who i am now if i would have never chosen to be bam bam if i would have chosen to be what he wanted me to be i would have never been happy in life i would have been miserable i would have you know just been going through stuff so i just chose happiness more than anything and i feel the advice that i would give to the younger crowds especially the ones who are from the lgbtq community whether you're a lesbian or whether you're gay would be just choose to be you be you because nobody could ever be you and it doesn't matter how gay you are it doesn't matter how feminine you are or how masculine you are to me dick is dick ass and ass and gay is gay so it just doesn't matter it just matters on how you carry yourself so i would always advise you to just be who you are even if your parents don't accept you choose happiness and just carry yourself with respect and i feel like people would just learn to adapt to who you are as a person because they see that you're not a disrespectful gay okay um uh, that was deep and um i'm so like respectful of your strength um dealing with that situation i don't know if i could um 
because when I came out to my mom, yeah, yeah, she was she. I was worried about her the most, and I'm gonna just say that it all went great, and hopefully, like the strength of you, this um, people hearing your story and your strength will encourage somebody who is looking up and seeing you on um, um, the series of the Come Up Miami. Right, they would be strong as well. They will find that same strength in you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, next question. Now, we did speak on you being um, a male exotic um, dancer. <laughs> yes. Now, I have some questions on that. Let me, let me let me take a little hit real quick because I'm going to need it. Take your hit, baby. Take your hit. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, how did you get into the male exotic, ex the male exotic dancing industry? Okay. Well, I got into the male exotic dancing industry at a very young age. This is actually a, a fact about Bam Bam. Um, I started stripping actually in and out, off and on, um, since I was 17 years old at a club where. I had a friend who was always a stripper. She was older than me, and she knew managers in the LGBTQ community clubs around here in South Beach, Miami Beach, et cetera. So, um, you know, she knew my situation. She knew what I was going through when my mom left and and just saw it for herself. So she just wanted to help, and she basically talked to somebody, and, you know, they let me in as long as I didn't say anything. So I didn't, and that's kind of how I got introduced to the nightlife. Okay, okay. Um, why, in your opinion, why is there such a negative st uh, stigma on the exotic dancing industry on that particular field? I feel like there's always a negative, you know, look at strippers because people are just very um, judgmental. People just judge this book by its cover or they're very stereotyped. So I feel like people just think that every stripper is like a, a hooker, a slut, a prostitute, that we all suck dick or that we all lay in our backs to get money. And in reality, that's completely false because a lot of us out here are hustling to take care of our moms, take care of our grandmas, take care of ourselves. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but working a regular nine to five and getting a check every week is not really gonna cut the bills that I have to pay for my house, for my stuff. And I pay more than at least $5,000 of bills. So I'm pretty sure that that McDonald's, not knocking anybody off that works on those things, you know, kudos to everyone who has a job because a job is a job, but that's not going to pay for my lifestyle. So I knew that stripping was it. And plus, you know, like I said, when my mom left, I lost everything and I had to start back from zero by myself without the help of like aunts, cousins, uncles, nobody, everybody basically turned their backs against me, even my own siblings. So that's what made me really just put my big boy pants on and just be a stripper. So I feel like okay. that's what people think that strippers are like, you know, just these bad people that just sleep around are very promiscuous and, and it's not, we just get on the pole, we dance and it's just a work of art. That's really how I see it. Okay. Okay. Um, what are the perks and disadvantage um, of being um, in that particular industry? Well, I feel like the perks about it is definitely um, the money. The money is really good. You know, the money is what got me out of having nothing to having everything that I want. So I feel like that's something that's good about it. Something that's really bad about it is it really affects my love life. Even though I, I really don't date, I really don't, you know, don't look for relationships. I'm just really the type of person that wants to just hustle and make a, a name for myself and just be successful. But it just really does. It's affected a lot of guys that have been interested in me and they find out that I'm a stripper. So they're like, oh, you know, I don't think that's like a right thing for me or a good look for my family to know. So it just kind of ends there. But I don't I wouldn't say it's a disadvantage. If anything, it's a disadvantage for them because it's their loss. OK, OK. Um, what can the viewers expect from you this season? The viewers could expect to see more of who Elvis Moran is and how Elvis Moran grew up and what Elvis Moran went through. And I feel like a lot of people, especially on reality shows and on platforms like this, only show the glamour stuff, you know, the 
the bags, the money, the houses, they show all these stuff, you know, but they don't really show what it took for them to get there and what obstacles they had to overcome as a person. And I feel like that's the only way people will be able to relate to you. So that's how I, when I joined the Come Up Miami, I told myself that I was going to be 100% authentic with my fans and not only with my fans, but also with myself so that people could relate to to my story and be like, yeah, maybe I did not lose my mom to cartel life, but maybe my mom died or, you know, maybe my mom abandoned us. So they could see that maybe there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that you could pick your own self up from whatever hole that you're in and just keep going. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Good uh, um, look on that. Um, what do you hope to gain from this experience? Um, I don't feel like I need to gain anything from this experience. I feel like I've already gained what I wanted. Um, going into this experience, I was very blinded on what I was getting myself into, especially being around other gay guys. Like I said, I've never really grew up having gay friends. So that was kind of something that I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to accomplish at least to get along with someone or make a friend. And I feel like I accomplished that very well the first time almost the first day of filming I clicked with the golden boy and me and him are just like this I love him he loves me we're just alike so that's something that I feel like I've gained from the show which is a really good gay friend okay okay that's good that's good and shout out to the golden boy when you to see my this golden listen boy. golden boy you're next we're gonna we're gonna interview uh, next we are <laughs> I have to DM him yeah okay um we're gonna go to name one sweet and sour um, about each cast member. I'm gonna go down the line, okay? We're gonna keep it light and sweet. First, Golden Boy. The Golden Boy. I would say he. I'm gonna say more than one. He's beautiful. He's honest. He's loving. He's loyal. He's caring. And something sour would be. He needs to answer his phone faster and text people back because he has a problem with texting people back. So that would be something sad about him. He won't text you back. I hate that. When I text you, I need you to be on point. Period. Listen, period. Okay, the next one is Miles. Miles. I would say something. He's a po- something. He's a positive person. Um, something, something sweet, something sour would be, um, he's not afraid to let you know what it is, so he could be a little bit feisty sometimes. Okay, okay. Ain't nothing wrong with a little spicy now. No, exactly. I love it, though. <laughs> you may think that he won't tell you nothing, mm-hmm. and you may think they're quiet, but he'll let you know what it is in your motherfucking face. Good. I love those types. Um, cause I'm one of those types, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next one is John Tavion. John Tavion? John T- ah! <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, um, the singer dude. Jamarcus. I'm sorry. Is Jamarcus? Jamarcus, I think, yes. Like, this is literally the third time <laughs> I messed up his name. I'm We're sorry, to- baby, if you watch this. <laughs> but something about him okay something sweet about him I think he's very cute that's something sweet something sour I would be um, I can't say anything sour actually because I don't know him I feel like he wasn't there long enough to say something sour about him so yeah I never I only saw him like one time okay okay um wow uh Sean, the next one is Sean Dion. Something nice about Sean. Um, he had nice shoes the day that we got into a physical. Well, he got he had nice shoes the day that we fought. The first day. They were really nice. Okay, that's that's positive. That's positive. Nice shoes is positive. Yeah. Yeah. I love nice shoes. Uh one sour. He's a sloppy drunk. Ooh, those are the words. I hate a sloppy drunk. Baby, get off that floor. Listen, no, go on the floor. He doesn't go on the floor. But you will see what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. okay. Um, all right. The next one is uh, Prince. 
Let's go to Prince. Something sweet about Prince. Um, he minds his business. That's great. I, I love a person that minds his business. As of what I've seen, but yeah, as of what I've seen, that he minds his business. Um, something sour. I don't know. I've never. I haven't gotten to know him either. Every time I, he just. I don't know. He just sits there. So. Oh, just like the trailer, because that's what I got from him. I didn't get that much from him. In, from the trailer. <laughs> oh, no so, shade it, though. I just didn't. Get no, that no much shade. From. I swear, no shade. But he just. I swear, he just sits there. So I'm like, okay. So I don't, you know, if you don't talk to me, I don't talk to you. Like, bet- between Prince and, not to, I'm just going to say my little comment. Um, between Jatavion, is it Jatavion? No, Jamarcus. Oh, gosh, we just said it. Okay, Jamarcus, <laughs> between Jamarcus and Prince, their scenes, I'm like, okay, marketing, singer, that's it? Well, at least they have a job, so that's a plus. Hey, kudos to them. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so you don't you don't have no sour because he's he you didn't have any you didn't yeah. get that one on one. Yeah, I have I have never seen anything really sour from out the one few two times I think I've seen him, I filmed with him. Um, yeah, I've never saw anything really sour. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the next one. The uh, the last one, which is Lamar. Is it Lamar or Jamar? I don't even know. Whatever you say, it's fine. Okay, Lamar. Okay. One sweet, one sour. Um, something sweet about him. Um. I really don't have anything like Come on, I know it's it's happy pride. Just give at least one. Can you can't think of at least one? The chickens that were running in his front lawn are really nice. Oh, that's positive. You know, yeah, I were chi- running you in his, love chicken. There were chickens running in his front lawn. So they were really nice. Okay, we all love chickens. Give me one sour thing about Mr. Lamar. Um, he's a snake. He's two-faced. Okay. He runs his mouth. Um, he's messy. He his breath smells like gas. Um, and that's probably. A I, I could go down the list, but it's like not worth it. I think the next questions will be. It's we should just go to the next question. Okay, okay, okay. So judging, okay. Now let's go. Judging from the official trailer, we see, we see a little uh, snap of you taking what is a frame, and I <laughs> feel like you was about to chuck it at somebody. Who was chucking this picture at? <laughs> Because <laughs> we see you several times jumping at <laughs> at these people. I think one of them was uh, Sean, and one of them I don't know. I don't because I don't I didn't see you getting. I don't think I saw you get into it with Lamar. But who you were chucking the picture at? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say because I, I am on a contract, so I'm gonna say. Certain, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna work around it, but I'm gonna say certain things that your oh, your imagination can pretty much say. Well, based off the trailer, you see that um, it's me, the golden boy, um, Miles. You know, it's uh, Sean, and then Uncle Fester. Mm. So you know. You see us there, so you could just put your imagination. If you see on the trailer, there's like a swing that goes down, and mm-hmm. you could see that's where that swing lands. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, you'll see that 
there's a continuation to that. There's, it doesn't stop there. There's something, it continues on from there. Very, very crazy. Things get very heated from that moment on. It gets very crazy. Yeah, okay. so that, and then the picture frame, um, I was just very angry. You know, I felt like, um, at that time, I felt like these, like, two bitches were coming at me. So when I felt like two bitches were coming at me, ain't no bitch gonna try to jump me. So I knew that it might only... You know, I was going to pick up the picture frame or the glass frame and throw it. That's really what I was going to do, as you can see. Um, so you guys are just going to have to stay tuned and watch that. But before all of that, rewind, there is something that happens between me and Lamage or Tamaj or Lakaj or Cockroach, whatever. Well, there's something that happens between me and him. And I feel like that moment everyone's just gonna live for it i feel like that's gonna be the moment that everyone's gonna live for it because have you ever been have you ever okay have you ever found out when someone's really just running their mouth and someone's being fake and you think that person just is smiling in your face and you th you know the information deep inside but and you think that that person thinks they're getting away with it that person thinks that they're being fake and then you finally confront them and you just throw not bullets you just throw fucking bazookas at that motherfucker and you start throwing flames on that and start setting that bitch on fire and that bitch burns up well that's exactly what's mm -hmm. gonna happen so you gonna see the little burning up and that that motherfucker got put to ashes that day because he fucked with the wrong one mm. you know what i've been in a couple of situations like that and i could just tell from me i could just only speak for me that i have really expressed my tolerance for that person and I let them know and they will forever they will forever know who I am and what I get so yeah we're just gonna leave it at that um okay what is next for um after this experience after you you know because I feel like y'all still have more filming to do right yes we actually have to film um the second half of come up because due to COVID-19 we couldn't finish filming and the way we kind of ended things I don't feel was like a way where we could kind of have a finale so we're kind of going to film for probably another two another three to four weeks and that would start on July 7th we'll start filming um okay, the good. rest of the okay good so once you finish once you're done with this once you are finished with this experience what is next for Bam Bam well, um, you know, I definitely have another project that I um, that's interested in me and I'm interested in them. So that's all in the works. You know, it's not a for sure yet. It's not a, a definite answer, but it's definitely in the talks and in the works. So that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to. But especially, you know, with COVID-19, it's been a little bit difficult to kind of like, you know, just get together with people, especially people that do like, you know, the reality shows, filming and stuff. It, you know, it's putting everybody at risk. So I'm just waiting to hopefully this COVID-19 calms down so I could just get back up and start working. I can't wait to see what you have in store for your fans and your supporters. I can't wait. I just now, want them um, to definitely the come up Miami is definitely not the end that you will see of me. Good, good, good. Um, any any um comments that you want to say to your cast members or you want to um, say to the production or anything like that? Um, yeah, shout out to Karan for making me the baddest bitch that I am and showcasing that and actually showing people for who they really are. He's a very great producer. He's a very great editor and creator. And I feel like um, he did really did an amazing job with the trailer. I was very shocked. Everyone, all my friends were shocked. And I feel like he just did a very iconic season. So kudos to him. Um, I would also like to say the golden boy, I love him and I can't wait to start filming with him. I actually have a few little ideas that I have, you know, I'm probably going to teach the boys how to, we'll probably have like a stripping class or something. I'll teach them how to twerk or get on the pole. So it's a lot of fun thing and ideas that I have for the boys. And then especially since we have a new person coming in. So you guys keep an eye out for that. Okay. I love new members. I love new members. Um, thank you for that little bit of tea. Uh, just um, 
Now, guys, um, do you have any? Um, oh, so you you have any lasting comments towards the cast? Anything, or that's all? Or do you want me to? You, if you want, I'll say something to, about each of them. Yeah, you can say your lasting comments about each of them. Your um, last comments before the season starts. Okay, well, I already said about the Golden Boy, uh, Miles. Um, thank you for being very positive and for actually seeing things for how they really are. And, um, yeah. Well, friends, hopefully I get to know you. Cause I don't know you. Um, Marcus, you're cute. But that's all, I, that's all I really know. And that you sing, too. You have a really good voice. I did hear that. Um, Sean. Sean. Um, I really just, I don't have nothing. Okay, okay. Um, Lamar? Lamange, you kept writing your fucking gums on Instagram and you've been starting shit. And I told your ass to calm the fuck down. You know what it was in that scene. And you know how I roasted your grandpa looking ass. Okay, your gums look about to fall off. They look like an 80 year old man's teeth. I feel bad for you. If you want, I could get you a doctor. I could get you with my doctor, Dr. Perez. He's here in Alhambra Avenue in Miami, Florida. We could get you a discount. Just say Bam Bam sends you, and he could shield down your gums to match the little teeth that you got. It looks like my dog's teeth. So that's what I recommend you. So don't forget that we still got to film, and don't forget that we're going back. So I want you to tell me everything that you said about me on social media and my motherfucking face. That's pretty much what I got to say to that old bitch. You're 30. And you're Ubering as a job. Get a real job, bitch. Okay, okay. But then he, uh, I, I don't have a career. Baby, I'm over here dripping in Versace, bitch. I have a, a whole bunch of shit I can show you. But I don't do that. I don't front shit. I don't throw shit in people's face. But you over here, I do this, I do that. You're a fucking Uber driver. Go pick up your passenger, bitch. Okay. Okay. Um anything you um anything else you would like to fans um and the viewers to know about you? Like any last impressions that you want the fans to take away from um like would you want the fans to know about you while watching this season? I want the fans to know um that I was 100% myself and I just wanted them to really be relatable to a lot of things that I went through in life and that you know we all go through things and it just is what it is. I also want you to know that I never start anything. I just finish it. A lot of the fights that you see on the trailer, I would say don't judge it yet. Just watch that the season and then you could go ahead and have your opinions there because I'm pretty sure by episode 2 your opinions will change drastically. Okay, good, good. Well, um, we're going um, going to end it here. Okay. So, if you um, do, you have any um, last um, anything that I didn't ask you that you wanna um, that you wanna feel feel free to just comment on um, any last comments or about anything that you would like to put out there or you know that I didn't ask you. Um, this is your time to say it. Anything else? Let's see. Um, no, I think you pretty much really covered everything. Okay, good. Well, um, I want to say thank you, Bam, for being my first, first, first interview. You have been great, like, through this whole and I just want to tell you guys from, because this is definitely going on my YouTube channel, The Lovable Asshole. Um, this man right here has helped me um, during this process. And he's been so gracious and so humble that he actually was like, we can do it as much as time as you want. And you have been very, very gracious. And you've been very beautiful through this whole process of helping me through this. So Aww. I just want to say, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, Thank you. Thank no, you for the, the phone calls and the DMs and just the love that you showed to me. And I'm in, definitely, you know, I'm going to reciprocate that back to you. I'm going to support anything that you have going on because we're two gay um, um, brothers in this community. We have yeah. to, my, my biggest thing about supporting 
the people that you love and the once I mess with you, I'm definitely mm-hmm. going to be behind you. I'm going to be on you. I'm going to support everything that you right. have. Just reach out to me if you want me to promote, put a thing. You don't have to worry. Like, just text me and be like, oh, you want to post? I'm going to post. You know, <laughs> just let me yeah. know because I'm willing to support anything. If you have a hat, line, shirt, I'll pick up a shirt. I'll pick up a hat. Just, you know, I'm willing to support my fellow um LGBT um, community and brothers and sisters and everything like that. And um, I just want to let you know I really, really respect you and thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure. You're very amazing. Your reviews are awesome. You're not afraid to let bitches know how it is, but at the same time, you never leave out the positive things as well. And I really like that because you give a mixture of both. And I feel like you you don't really pick sides. You just say what the truth is. And I love that. I appreciate that. And I'm just thankful. Thank you. So, guys, um, please, please, um, um, you're watching this. Um, please follow um, Bam Bam at that, um, at Tatted Up Bam. Follow Tatted. me um, on, Insta- on Instagram. Oh, yes. Yeah, on Instagram at Tatted Up Bam Bam. Not yeah. just Bam Bam Bam. Yes. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram at the lovable asshole underscore. Um, everything will be um, in the description below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, the lovable asshole, and um, click that notification bell. And look forward to more of me and Bam because definitely when the season starts, he will be back for yeah. more. Most definitely. We're yeah. going to Kiki. We're going to spice. We're going to be spicy. Yeah. And we're just going to keep it light and fun. With a yeah. little bit of shade. It will not be the last you see of me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bam, for um, this. Um, thank you. This my first interview. Thank you. Thank I'll, you. I'll see you soon. Yes. When the season starts, July. When is it? July 22nd. July- Second at 7 p.m. It lands on a Wednesday only on YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Gemini Films because that will give you exclusive first looks at sneak peeks and just other things from the come up that you might want to know. All right. And if and let me put as addition, just a little quick note. Um, Karan, Karan, Karan. Yes, me. Um, I need to, I want to do the after show, just a little thing i will be doing it trust and believe it's going to be in the cars for me sprinkling it (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so um what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing um what are you doing today what are you doing i'm actually up late because i have i don't work tomorrow i don't i haven't been working because of this corona so i've been you know just spending time staying up especially my sleeping schedule is messed up all i do is eat sleep work out and smoke so it's just crazy so that's just basically i'm just relaxing okay so we're going to end this interview because i could talk for forever if i don't stop this thing i'm going to be talking forever okay so bye bam bye I Until next love- time, guys, you will be seeing him back here interviewing with Moi, the lovable asshole. <laughs> Period. And if you, and just by the way, this is my friend's shirt. Pick it up at his Instagram. Pick it up at his Instagram. Uh, hundred brawn, B R A W N, and his uh, and his uh, website is www. A hundred brawn. dot com. Yes, and support black businesses. Period. Black Lives Matter, ho. <laughs> Period. Period. <bitch. laughs> Bye, Bam Bam. Bye, baby. Thank you.